Before this video starts, shout out to Tilted. He subscribed to the channel. I mean, he commented down below that he subscribed to the channel. If you want to be counted, if, if you want to be shouted out in the next recorded video, then subscribe to the channel and comment down below that you subscribed. And I'll catch you on the next video. Now enjoy. One of the most interesting teams in the league today is the Philadelphia 76ers. They transformed from a tanking team that won fewer than 20 games every year to a Eastern Conference championship contender to a team with four max slots in a very bad position. This Sixers team is very interesting and today I will be looking at the expectations for them in the 2020-2021 season. But first, we have to look for how they got here. The Sam Presti era when they tanked was a tough time for Sixers fans, but they ended up with the third pick in 2014 resulting in Joel Embiid's. They also held the 10th pick in the draft to select point guard Alfred Payton. They selected Jaleel Okafor, third overall in the 2015 draft. They selected Ben Simmons with the first pick in the 2016 draft and traded up for Markel Fourth in the 2017, 2017 draft to hold back-to-back -back first overall picks. Soon after, Sam Presti was fired and with the core of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, they became a contender in the Eastern Conference. Although they hit a hit, with Ben Simmons and Embiid, they missed heavily on Jaleel Okafor and Markel Fultz. They were both shipped out before their rookie deal expired. They also had role players including Robert Covington and Dario Sarge. They made a playoff berth and was defeated in the second round. Eventually, they shipped Robert Covington and Dario Sarge with some additional assets to get Jimmy Butler in the 2018-2019 season. Jimmy had just had a bad stint in, Timber in the Timberwolves and the Chicago Bulls and had an expiring deal. He requested a trade for J Jimmy requested a trade and the Sixers looked like a contender. At the trade deadline, they traded a young sharpshooter and Landry Shamit, expiring deals and two first and second round picks for Tobias Harris. They traded a protected 76ers first round pick and an unprotected 2020-21 Miami Heat pick. These were included in the Paul George deal. This proved that the 76ers were all in to win now, competing in a LeBron-less Eastern Conference. The Sixers won 51 games, ending as the third seed. Their bright season, however, ended due to the in an infamous Kawhi Leonard game winner where they were one bounce away to eventually de defeating the eventual champions. They, but they still pushed the Raptors to seven games and would have probably made it farther if that shot didn't go in. But they had several choices to make in this offseason. Starters in JJ Redick, Jimmy Butler, and Tobias Harris were all unrestricted free agents. But this offseason off would be terrible. Elton Brand, the Sixers GM, decided to let their best shooter, J.J. Redick, walk to the Pelicans for free, for nothing. They signed and traded Jimmy Butler, when their best player, sometimes their best player in the playoffs, to the Miami Heat for Josh Richardson. Jimmy clashed with the 76ers coach, Brett Brown, and didn't want to stay. So the Sixers had to choose between Jimmy and Brett Brown, and they eventually chose Brett Brown, but the year after, fired Brett Brown. With the 76ers cap space, they signed uh, Tobias Harris to a max, paying him even more than both Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. Okay, I guess. But then they also gave a 34-year-old Al Horford a max. Now, fast forward to last season, where they collapsed in the playoffs and only ended up as a six seed, where they faced the Boston Celtics in the first round, and they were embarrassingly swept by the Celtics. They had now four maxes that didn't work out well. Now, what's their expectations this year? When looking at the Sixers' expectations, I first have to note that they are not as hyped as last year. Last year, they were third in ESPN's power rankings above the Lakers, Celtics, and mon many other teams like the Nuggets. But, of course, they're heavily disappointed. Now, they are, I think, around the... 7th to 12th power rank team, but uh, I won't be very surprised if they have a bad 
back season. They have also dropped down to dark horse contenders instead of contenders, where contenders are the lover of the Bucks, Raptors, Nets, and Celtics. I think they are definitely below that tier. They have no cap space due to their four maxes, and today, we're, at first, we're going to be looking at the offseason. I... Expect them definitely to get more shooters around Simmons and Embiid. And I think that getting a new coach in Doc Rivers, they should keep these young two studs. I will be looking at two ideas for how they should do this offseason. The first one is that they should target Buddy Heald, who has basically requested a trade from the Sacramento Kings. The Sixers will throw in Josh Richardson, the 21st pick, and two seconds. You can throw in some extra picks, but... That's basically the main deal, and that's a pretty enticing deal for the but for Buddy. That's gonna be it's gonna be hard to trade Al Horford when you there is a 34 year old vet having a max deal. That's pretty hard to trade, but they could potentially include Al Horford in the Buddy Heel trade, where they would also get Harrison Barnes. So the Sixers would get Harrison Barnes, and the Kings would get Al Horford. The Kings were actually interested in Al Horford and prepared to give him a max, but he signed with the Sixers. So, or they can tr try to swap Al Horford for Eric Gordon. There, this would this would be a small board, so kind of it would be a center for the. Rockets, where he would play his natural position, and he, he's able to stretch the floor, and the Sixers get some extra shot creation. They can also try to use some mid-level exception for more shooters than my hope. So then, they could rather sound like it resign Alec Burks, maybe give like Kyle Korver uh, a one-year deal. So they're going to be basically running a Ben Simmons, Buddy Heald, Harrison Barnes, Tobias Harris, and Joel Embiid, 75, and that could probably fit better. Tobias goes to his natural position. But now that there are Katie and Kyrie with, are back, the Bucks are going all in, the consistency of the Raptors, and Tatum and Brown getting better on the Celtics, and of course the Heat, the East is starting to get loaded. I predict that they will be, with this team, the third to sixth seed. And that's okay, but they can definitely make no, more noise. The second trade is for Chris Paul. Now, this one raises their ceiling. The one with Buddy Heald raises their floor. So this could potentially put them as a top two seed because Chris Paul is just so good at making a difference. So as we all know, like I said, like, uh, like I said before, we know his time on the Thunder. He is a difference maker. The Sixers might be one piece away from the next level, like other teams have been one piece away, and then they become champions. Like the, I guess, kind of the Raptors where they traded DeMar for Kawhi, kind of. Um, so they are basically packaging Al Horford to match the salary. Matisse Thibault, Zaire Smith, 21st pick in the future first and second. If Sam Presti wants some more picks, I'm pretty sure the Sixers would give it to them. So basically the Thunder, I get a... They get kind of oh, they get two young players and Matisse Thybul and Zaire Smith with the defense of Zaire Smith. I mean, uh, Matisse Thybul and Lou Dort. That's pretty good. And Zaire Smith is also only 21 years old, so they might be able to salvage something from him. So they also got two additional picks to add to their abundance amount of picks. Now the Sixers would then run CP3, Josh Richardson, Simmons at the three, Tobias Harris, and Joel Embiid. I think that can definitely be a top two seed. Chris Paul just changes so much, adding a point guard, to the Sixers team that needs some more playmaking, more spacing can be so beneficial. I think that if the Sixers get in, then that's a big upgrade. So, and then with this team, I think they would be also like the third to six seed, but they have much higher they have a much higher chance to hit the second seed or potentially even the first seed because they have so much talent on the roster. They just don't fit together well. So basically, what are the expectations for the 76ers? Well, if they trade for, if they go the the route that will raise their floor, it's going to be getting Buddy Heel and potentially Eric Gordon slash Harrison Barnes there. I think that's like a three to six seed. It's still going to be very tough to beat the Celtics and the Bucks. But then if they try to trade for a blockbuster deal in the point guard himself, Chris Paul, then that can actually, they can actually make a lot of noise in the Eastern Conference and potentially even win like 55. I expect them for both sides, 47 to 40, 55 wins. And I think that's 
their expectations. So yeah, um, this is the first part of the series, expectations for. If you like it, subscribe to the channel and like it, like the video, and also comment down below any other teams you want to see, and I'll see you all next time.